Hey, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you're listening in from around the world. Author, leadership, and team development speaker Joe Woodley, and this is another key moment for faith. You know, today I just want to talk to you, or this morning I want to talk to you really quickly about the stages of sin. The stages of sin. Uh, make sure you click on the subscribe button down at the bottom of the screen. Subscribe to this channel, like this channel, share this channel, share this video. Friends, neighbors, guy down the street around the corner, and even your enemies. And they may just happen to become your friend. So, uh, today I want to talk about, like I said, the stages of sin. As we know in uh, Romans, the sixth chapter says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Our Lord, meaning that He is first and foremost in our lives. He's not just Savior, He's first and foremost in our lives. So I wanted to talk to you about, guys about the stage of sin because I think it's important that as believers, we have the type of relationships that we can have these discussions with one another as iron sharpens iron, uh, whether it's with uh, those who are our fellow believers, our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, or even those who may uh, not be believers, or those who are new believers, and even some seasoned believers. And it's important that we have the relationships to have these conversations because uh, if we don't have those relationships it's often very difficult for people to receive what it is that you have to say. You know, I know so often that I've seen changes and transition happen in many brothers and sisters' lives in the faith because people stood up and developed the relationships that were necessary so that the people could receive whatever the form of correction was that needed to be, uh, that needed to be communicated. And those relationships had to be developed, obviously, amongst the parishioners or the congregants. Uh, but those relationships also needed to be developed uh, from the pulpit or from the platform. Those who are speaking from the platform have to have the relationships with the people who are the congregants. Those are the listeners. Those are the watchers. Because if they don't have those type of relationships, it's very difficult for people to... Uh, receive that because you're coming from a very abstract point of view. So I want to say what I'm going to say here uh, with that caveat because um, when I'm going to be sharing a scriptural and I know that uh, some people may not really uh, want to receive what I have to say, may not like what I'm about to say, but it is completely 100% scriptural. So let me say this. Um, we get to the point where we get to where we have what the Bible calls a reprobate mind, where you can't tell the difference between right and wrong, good and evil, uh, through a set of stages. It doesn't just happen overnight. It's not something that's just automatic. You don't just wake up one day and decide, you know, I'm an atheist, or wake up one day and decide, you know, I don't trust God, or I don't like God, or I don't want to hear about God, or whatever it is. It doesn't just happen. There are stages that get you there. And there are stages that, and this, this, these stages happen not only on a personal level, but these sta stages happen on a corporate level in the body of Christ. And many of the things that we're seeing in the body of Christ um, that are being promoted even within the body of Christ did not happen overnight. They happened through a series of steps, a series of stages. So I'm going to break this down as very simply. Uh, as I possibly can. I'm not going to get too deep and too elaborate because I don't think this is the format for that. And again, these conversations should happen globally, corporately, but you as a believer and I as a believer need to have these type of conversations with uh, fellow brothers and sisters on a very personal, intimate level as well. So I'm coming from this platform, which is one, you know, your pastor, your preacher, uh, speaker needs to come at it from the, another platform and then again these need to be happening on a very personal level as well where there are the intimate relationships so we can have these very hard discussions and get into these hard truths not your truth my truth or whatever truth I'm talking about the truth which is the word of God so step number one is we tolerate sin that's the first stage tolerance when I was 
you know, in my teenage years, that was a very popular term that was used. The terminology was tolerance, and we need to tolerate one another. But understand that that is not the end goal of the enemy. That is not his objective. So we start off with tolerance. We allow sin to take place in our lives. Uh, we uh, don't uh, correct or help our brothers and sisters to walk through the process of sin. So we tolerate it. You know, we're like, you know, usually tolerance goes something like this. Who am I to judge? Right. And there's a whole lesson in that in and of itself, because the Bible does not tell us not to judge, but it gives us parameters on which we are to judge. That's a whole separate teaching right there. But it's important that we understand that. So when people say, you know, don't judge me, bro, we're always judging. We judge the fruit of the person. Uh, we don't condemn individuals, but there is right there is wrong there is good and there is evil and those require a lot a, a sense of judgment and being able to judge what is right judge what is good and judge what is evil that's why the scripture says rightly dividing the word of god the word of truth okay because you're making judgments on those things and so we tolerate those things we say who am i to judge and so we let things happen around us where we allow things or permit things into our lives which are ungodly and we make excuses for behavior uh, that is not in alignment with God's word, his will, his best for our lives. So we make these excuses and we say, you know, again, who am I to judge? And, you know, and we take scriptures out of context, judge not lest you be judged, you know. And so we take a lot of scriptures out of context to justify tolerating sin, sin in our lives, sin around us, and even sin in our churches, you know, that we're, we're just a loving church. And love is not the absence of correction. As a matter of fact, a loving God corrects us. And he places people in our lives who correct us. And I have men. I'm so blessed to have men in my life and some women who are in my life who provide correction where it is necessary. So the first stage is, to uh, is tolerance. The next stage that we begin to see after we've tolerated for so long, the natural progression is acceptance. What does acceptance look like? Well, that's just the way they are. That's just who they are, right? So we accept it. Yeah, that's just how things are going to be. Now, how many of us have family members in our lives who uh, act out or do things and we just say, well, that's just how they are. They may be suffering from mental illness or whatever it is. And we say, and instead of addressing the situation or having addressed the situation from the very beginning, we say, that's how they are. That's just who they are. I remember this is why this is so important that we stop this at the tolerance level before we get to the acceptance level. I remember when my son was really small and we were at we were at a church we used to go to at the time and he had been somewhere and um, he had watched some movie that, you know, someone had allowed him to watch. And so in any case, he's outside playing with some of the kids outside of the church. And someone comes in the church and they say, hey, you know, Brother Joe, Brother Joe, Isaiah said something he had no business saying. He said a, he said a cuss word, okay? And so, um, you know, I go out there and, you know, he, feel, obviously he feels like, okay, I'm in trouble. I did something that I wasn't supposed to do. But I go up to him and I say, okay, what did you say? And he tells me what he said. You know, you can kick, you know, I'm going to kick your whatever, right? He says this cuss word. And so I said to him, I didn't yell at him. I didn't scream at him. I didn't go berserk. You know, I didn't become so legalistic. And, you know, I'm like stern and I'm, you're going, I didn't, you know, none of this, you going to hell and all this stuff. At the same time, I didn't look at us and say, well, you know, kids are kids and, you know, he's learning. I didn't do that. You know, what I said is, we don't do that. Okay. I need you to understand. And this is why we don't do that because we are men of God. And men of God, people of God, do not conduct themselves that way. We don't talk that way. I don't care if you see other people in church who talk that way. That's them, but we're people of God. And so we've got to control ourselves, and we don't we don't talk like the world. We don't act like the world. We don't do those things. And so he's like, oh, okay. And I was able to nip it in the bud right then and there. We were able to have those conversations. And sure, there were other things we were, we've had to have conversations about. But it was important that I didn't tolerate it then and just say how, you know, it is what it is. Because when we look around, 
you know, you got kids running around these neighborhoods, cussing each other out, doing all kinds of stuff that is completely inappropriate. And it's because it was tolerated in the very beginning and we moved to a point of acceptance. Kids are going to be kids. People are going to be people. Sin is going to be sin, right? Or people are going to act the way they're going to act. And so, well, I have a family member of mine who dealing with some issues should have been dealt with you know, long time ago, we tolerated as a family. I could, I'm speaking not only uh, as an observer. I'm talking, talking from experience, having watched it, and also sin, uh, sin having operated in my life. And so we tolerated it, and then after to tolerating it for so long, you got to start making excuses, and you say, "Well, that's just the way they are." No, that's not just the way they are. We allowed this. We tolerated this for so long that now we got to the point where we we are now accepting it and that's not okay all right and so you need to have these type of conversations if in your congregation pastors need to be talking about sin from the pulpit not from not from the perspective of just just sending everybody to hell obviously if you don't give your life to the lord there's only two places you're going to go heaven or hell that's the word of god no matter what the majority of believers in this country believe, where most people don't believe in a hell and this, that, and the other, that's not what the Word of God says, right? So we want to we want to have those conversations, but you need to have it by getting to know your members. You need to know it by getting to know your staff. You cannot, the, the people are not going to receive if you don't take the time to get to know them, if you don't take the time to invest in their lives, more than just getting up from behind a podium and barking at people or getting behind the podium and giving some inspirational aspirational message and barely touching on scripture i'm talking about you got to sit down and develop real relations with people and we got to do that on a personal level as well so that we can receive from one another so you get into acceptance and so now because it's been accepted well hey you know what you know i i can't judge i'm not going to say anything and that's just the way things are and that's just how they are right but again that is not the ultimate goal of the enemy we then move to the next stage. The next stage, which the, which the enemy wanted all along, he didn't want tolerance. Let's be very clear. Nobody wants to be tolerated. What do we always say? Don't tolerate people, celebrate them, right? We don't want to tolerate people, we need to celebrate them. So the enemy takes us from tolerance to acceptance, and then the next stage is affirmation. Affirmation. Why, why is affirmation so different than acceptance and tolerance? Well, tolerance is, I'm just going to deal with you even if I don't like you, even if I don't agree with you. Hey, you know what? Who am I to judge, right? Acceptance is, that's how they are. I'm accepting that that's just how they are, right? And that's acceptance. Now we get into affirmation, which affirmation is, is openly promoting sin. I am affirming this person's behavior. I am affirming their position. And so it's not just accepting, but I'm going to openly promote it. Well, you know what? I think more people should behave this way. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, as a matter of fact, more people need to be, more people need to come out with whatever the, uh, position they stand on. And I'm not going to just I'm not just going to celebrate you. I'm going to throw you a parade. I'm going to have a party. I'm going to have a celebration. Which is where the enemy wants us. He doesn't want us just to tolerate. He wants us to openly be in defiance of God, right? I've accepted it. Now I'm in open defiance. I don't care what anyone else says. I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to throw myself a party. I'm going to have an event. I'm going to even promote this amongst people, right? Because it's not just accepting. Now I'm going to go out. I'm going to recruit people to believe what I believe. I'm going to recruit people into sin. I'm going to recruit people into destruction. And that's where we find many of our churches, uh, unfortunately, today, where we are actively affirming things that are against God's will, which the Bible calls abominable, right? It's an abomination. It is, it is We are promoting destruction among people. So, you know, instead of talking about sin from the perspective of God has his best for you and this is not his best for you, now I'm telling people, hey, not just come as you are, but stay as you are. Because we serve such a loving God that it doesn't matter whether you disobey him or not. It doesn't matter whether you uh, violate his precepts and his laws. You know what? God is so loving. He overlooks all of that stuff. And he's just going to be your best friend and your buddy and your powerful life. 
And that is not scriptural. That's not the word of God. That's not where we should stand as believers. And so he wants us to move from, again, tolerance to acceptance to affirmation. And when you move to the path of affirmation, what you basic, what you have basically done, as you said, now what the Bible calls is a reprobate mind. You've now said what was good, I now consider to be evil. So what was good was the laws of God, the righteousness of God, the holiness of God, the precepts of God. I have now taken that and said that that is evil. And now I am putting man's own thoughts, man's own processes, man's own wavering morality and and his own uh, lack of integrity in the place of God. And I am now saying that that is now good. So I move God into the bad column, move man into the good column. And I say that what was right is now wrong and what was wrong is now right. And that's where the enemy wants to take us. And that's where the enemy has taken many of us in the body of Christ. And that's why it's so important that as believers, we not only hold the line in our own personal lives, but we hold each other accountable. But the only way to hold each other accountable is we've got to develop the real meaningful relationships. We've got to invest in relationships and we cannot be afraid to call each other out. Again, I have many women in my life who will call me out in a heartbeat. I'm telling you right now, they will call me out in a heartbeat. But I don't mind that. And I know because I know they're looking out for my good because they love me so much. They're not afraid. Like I did a, a, a broadcast before where I said, you know, do you have people in your life that love you enough to tell you the truth? And do you love people enough to tell them the truth? Well, I have those individuals in my life. Praise God. And it's helped me to continue to grow spiritually. So I want to challenge you guys. To really take inventory of yourself. I want to challenge you to develop those relationships from the pastoral level, for the administrative level, to the ministerial level, all the way down to the congregational and parishional level, that we need to develop those real meaningful relationships with one another so we can have these discussions. Because these discussions, unfortunately, on a broader scope are not being had. And people come in and out of church, they attend church, and they never change their entire lives. And there are many people who come to church who do not know the Lord. And do not have a relationship with the Lord and are living all sorts of raggedy lives because they don't have a relationship with the people, the real meaningful relationships that are necessary to address these concerns so they can truly see the fulfillment, the manifestation of the things of God in their lives. Anybody can go to church, but to develop a relationship with the Lord takes time, takes, takes relationship and it takes surrender and it takes humility. So I just wanted to challenge you guys on some of those thoughts today. I pray that you would receive them. I pray that you would um, really pray about them, contemplate on them, get in the word of God and ask God what he wants for your life. And Lord, if there's anything in my life that is not in your will, I pray that you will reveal it and that I will be open to you coming in and making those corrections and send people around me, around me to help me to grow in the areas that I need to grow in. Again, I'm off for Leadership and Team Development Speaker Joe Woodley. Thank you so much for joining me on today's broadcast. Beautiful day here in Columbus. Have an absolutely fantastic day. I look forward to connecting with you here again real, real soon. Don't forget to subscribe.